Sunday, September 15th, in the year of our Lord, 1963. It was a cool, overcast morning in Birmingham, Alabama. Sunday school classes were just ending in the basement of the 50-year-old Yellow Brick Church. The morning's lesson was The Love That Forgives, the fifth chapter of Matthew. Outside, parents were arriving to collect the children. At 22 minutes past the hour of 10, a force let loose that electrified and shook the world. I was feeling kind of low Late one night Late one night I was feeling kind of low Late one night Late one night I was feeling kind of low Late one night Late one night I was feeling kind of low I passed by the rainy street And heard a drum Southern segregation. 
Out of the 20 congressional committees that govern the country, 12 of them are in the hands of uh, congressmen who are nothing but southern segregation. But we can see that the government itself in Washington, D.C. is a segregationist government. And uh, they teach you and me that the South lost the Civil War. But at the same time, when we examine the structure of the government, we find that it is run by white race, by white supremacists by segregationists who are called Dixiecrats but are actually nothing but Democrats whose leader is sitting in the White House who himself is also a former senator from a segregationist recent state known as Texas. Well, this may be true, but this does not hamper the fact, Mr. Malcolm, that there is a legal procedure. Now, in these bombings, and the question is, who is guilty of them? They didn't have to worry about a legal procedure when they wanted to send troops into South Vietnam. They didn't worry about legal procedures when they wanted to send their troops into Cuba and tell the Cubans what to do. Uncle Man has never worried about legality. Whenever he wanted to send his troops, wherever his interests were left. But when it comes to uh, protecting the lives of 22 million Afro-Americans, then all of a sudden Uncle Man becomes very conscious of legality.